Diffraction in photography. It limits the maximum resolving power of the lens. Conventional wisdom is that you should avoid small f-stops to limit the effect. But is that really practical advice? Oh, and by the way, did you know that pixel density does not impact diffraction at all? And while we are at it, I will illustrate why no sensor format, regardless of size, has an advantage when it comes to diffraction. Today, we are going beyond gut feelings and together we will discover how diffraction really works and what this means for our photography. My name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. When the term diffraction comes up, every photographer in the room nods silently, like sailors pondering over the flying Dutchman. Quite interestingly, diffraction and the ghost ship have much in common. Those who fear them the most are the ones who have never seen them in the real world. Ready for the ghost hunt? Diffraction is the basis for all photography. Without diffraction there would be no single photograph. Photography requires focused light and every time light passes through any size aperture, diffraction occurs. The diffraction pattern of light rays is circular with a bright center and concentric rings of decreased intensity around it. This pattern is called airy disk, named after George B. Airy. The airy disk you just saw is the smallest point to which a lens can focus a beam of light. If we take a close look at the airy disk once more, we can clearly see that different wavelengths of light produce differently sized disks. Look at the color fringes. The actual size of the airy disk depends on the F number. The smaller the F number, the smaller the airy disk. Here is a table that shows the size of the airy disk. Green light with a wavelength of 520 nanometers produces at different apertures. You can see the proportional increase. The diffraction phenomenon limits the theoretical resolving power of every lens at a given aperture. The theoretical resolving power can never be reached in practice, although some high-end lenses come very close. To put it in layman's terms, each focused ray of light produces an airy disk. The bigger the disk, the more the neighboring rays overlap. This overlap blurs the adjacent rays and therefore reduces discernible detail of the projected image. Therefore, the larger the F number, aka the smaller the physical aperture, the lower the resolving power of the lens. It seems a bit counterintuitive that a larger aperture setting resolves more detail. This contradicts what we photographers experience, because stopping down the lens usually improves details and sharpness. There are two reasons for this seeming mismatch between theory and practice. First, by stopping down, you reduce optical aberrations. Up to a certain point, this effect will benefit image quality more than the loss of resolving power will cost you. Note that modern high-performance lenses can be an exception to this rule, as they often reach peak performance wide open or almost wide open. Now, second, by stopping down, you also get more depth of field. When more of the subject is in acceptably sharp focus, our perception of sharpness will be higher. Now let's examine how diffraction looks in practice.
Did you see a difference except more depth of field? Most likely not, because at lower magnifications the effect of diffraction is negligible. By the way, we just discovered why a pinhole camera is able to produce an acceptably sharp photograph, although it has a very small f-stop, like f100. Let's look at the same images again, this time at a high magnification. Watch out for the loss of resolution. Now this time, the differences were far more discernible. A very common misconception is that smaller pixels are more prone to the negative effects of diffraction. Adherents of this theory will tell you that when the size of the airy disk is larger than one or more pixels, there are slight variations to this theory, the image quality will suffer drastically. Therefore, only sensors with fewer and larger pixels are good enough at small apertures. Resolving power is, however, a characteristic of the lens. The lens resolves, the sensor records. A sensor with higher resolution will simply detect more resolved information. So why is more diffraction observable when shooting with a high megapixel camera? Well, when you zoom in to 100% on a 10 megapixel file and to a 50 megapixel file, you are actually magnifying the images to a very different extent. If you apply the same magnification factor to both images instead, there will be no difference. Take a look, here is the proof. The left side of the image was captured with 80 megapixel, the right one with 20 megapixel. The aperture was f22 on a micro four thirds sensor. Let's zoom in. We can now see that at the same magnification factor, the diffraction is observable to the same degree. To conclude, pixel size is never the problem. The size of the airy disk is. Blaming pixel size would be the same as blaming your eyes for being good enough to see diffraction effects. The myth that small sensor formats are impacted more by diffraction is a bit trickier to debunk. The argument usually goes like this. At f1.4 a lens produces airy disks with the size of x. On a smaller sensor x takes up more space and therefore diffraction is worse on smaller sensors. The first part of the argument is correct. The size of the airy disks depends on the aperture. Indeed, an f1.4 lens will produce airy disks of a certain size. The problem is with the second part, because field of view and depth of field are left out of the equation. Time for some calculations. Let's assume we want to achieve an angle of view of 47 degrees our subject is at a distance of 5 meters and we want about 6 meters of the scene to be in acceptably sharp focus. With a 35 mm sensor we need a 50 mm lens and an f number of f8 for this. With a 4 thirds sensor we need a 25 mm and an f number of f4. This is what is due to what is commonly known as the crop factor. So now about diffraction. Because we need a different f number focal length combination on the 4 thirds sensor to achieve an almost indistinguishable look, the size of the airy disks is impacted as well. They are actually 4 times as big on the 35mm sensor compared to the 4 thirds sensor. But worry not full frame shooters, you don't have to switch to micro 4 thirds for this reason because the surface area of the 35mm sensor is also 4 times bigger than the surface area of the 4 thirds sensor. 
Therefore, the effect will be exactly proportional. We now know that the diffraction effect scales proportionally with depth of field. The more depth of field, the more diffraction. Three statements. First, sensor size is irrelevant when it comes to diffraction. Second, pixel size and pixel density are irrelevant when it comes to diffraction. And third, a certain amount of depth of field produces a certain amount of diffraction. Much like depth of field, sharpness and color, the amount of diffraction one finds tolerable is very subjective. There are no definitive hard limits. I recommend shooting a series of test pictures with your camera lens combination at different F numbers and compare the results to find your very personal sweet spot. If you are not into testing, I'd like to provide the following rule of thumb. These F numbers are the safe upper limits that you can always get away with. When picking an aperture in practice, I can give you three tips. Number one, depending on output size, the effect of diffraction might not be visible at all. Therefore, number two, always pick an aperture that gives you enough depth of field. It is better to have less overall sharpness than having an important part of the image out of focus. And number three, using a lens wide open will theoretically give you the best result. But because of aberrations, stopping down will usually improve overall contrast, sharpness and details. Small f numbers were always used in photography history for artistic expression. Think about group F64. Also, certain types of photography just require more depth of field. Worrying about diffraction will not get you anywhere. Be cognizant of the phenomenon, but keep in mind, nothing can fix an out of focus image. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.